Today we're going on a journey to Middle Earth to rank every Lord of the Rings set ever released. There's a total of 20 sets on today's list, including the mainline sets and everything else like promotional sets and polybags, so without further ado, let's get into it. At number 20 I have Build a Sword. This was an in-store promotional set from 2012. While it may have gotten a few kids in store, unfortunately nothing about this sword specifically links it to the Lord of the Rings. At number 19, I have set 30210, the Frodo gift would purchase polybag. This sort of set would be a nice addition for LEGO to release today because there has been a lot of desire for new Lord of the Rings sets. However, at the time of release, it was a reuse of Frodo that was just included in a mainline set a little over a month prior. Just a note that we're moving rather quickly through these smaller sets, but we will go into a bit more of a discussion for the larger sets coming up. At number 18, I have set 30211, the Yurikai with Ballista. This is not an exclusive figure because it was included in two other sets, but it was a cheap $4 way to build your Yurikai army. Unfortunately, it was only exclusive to LEGO Discovery Centers in late 2012. At number 17, I have the last polybag on the list, and that is set 50202, Elrond. Reason this beat out the army buildable Yurikai is because it's an exclusive Elrond minifigure known as the short caped Elrond. Unfortunately, not the easiest figure to get a hold of because it was only released as a gift with purchase for pre-order of the LEGO Lord of the Rings video game. At number 16, I have a newcomer, the Frodo and Gollum Brickheads pack. I really do not care for Gollum like at all in this set. I just don't think he came across well in Brickheads form, but what I do like is Frodo. I think he looks great, and the standard red and dark green LEGO pieces look very good and rich in this orientation. At number 15, I have 40632 Aragorn and Arwen Brickheads. I normally quite enjoy collecting Brickheads because they're a fun, simple little build to add to your day. And they do come in at what I feel is a fair price point, but they have fallen out of favor with me recently. And while Aragorn is my favorite character from the movies, other than good old Gandalf of course, I just sadly think this Brickheads pack looks a little bland. At number 14 I have the last of the Brickheads and that is 40631 Gandalf the Grey and the Balrog. This is my favorite of the Lord of the Ring Brickheads because you get the good old OG Gandalf which I think came across quite well in Brickheads form. However I'm never quite sure how I feel about the Balrog. Like it looks fine but at the same time maybe a bit too much. I don't know, let me know what you all think about the Balrog in the comments down below. And finally getting into the classic sets that you all want to see, at number 13 I have set 79005, The Wizard Battle. I am personally more of a display person than a play feature person, but I always try to consider play in my rankings. And this set, while quite a bit too simple for something I would display, not to mention it gets massively overshadowed by a future set, I will say that this was a well priced playset for children to battle it out wizard style. At number 12, I have set 9469 Gandalf Arrives. I originally wanted to put this set a bit higher because I think it's an iconic opening to the movies with Gandalf arriving to the Shire. And I also think it's a good supplementary set that would look good next to many of the other sets in the list. But in the end, I just felt this set was way too simple to beat out some of the other iconic scenes. And unfortunately, this would have been an exclusive Frodo, but it was ruined by that polybag from earlier. At number 11, I have set 9470, Shelob Attacks. This by far isn't one of my favorite scenes in the movies, as I'm not a major fan of gigantic creepy crawlers. But I will give credit when credit is due, because if you've ever wanted a LEGO spider, this is the set for you, because this is by far the best looking LEGO spider build I've ever seen. Otherwise, this set does lack a bit of substance, because it's essentially just Shelob and a tiny build of a rock formation, but the reason this set holds on its own is because to date, it's still the only way to get Gollum. This was an obvious must have for any LEGO Lord of the Rings fan, and surprisingly, it was also the only way to get Samwise Gamgee as well, at least until a 2023 set that we will see later. Now before I move on, I have to say that I really struggle ranking the next four sets on the list. I constantly moved these around and every time I walked away and came back to the list, they moved once again. So while I ranked these the way I did today, they can all essentially be rearranged between ranks 7 through 10 any other day. At number 10 I have set 79006, The Council of Elrond. This set did just enough to give off that Rivendell vibe to the consumer, at least for 2013, 
and at the time it was the only way to get two must-have characters being Elrond and Arwen. Unfortunately, Gimli and Frodo were reuses other than the exclusive face prints for Frodo, but for me, I think Gimli was a fine addition to the set, but Frodo should have definitely been substituted with someone else. Who would you have included instead? Let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, this was a good play set at the time and came in at only $30 for a simple build that included exclusive characters and an overall rich elvish vibe. At number 9, I have set 9476, The Orc Forge. The Forge is predominantly shown in the first movie, however, it does make appearances throughout the trilogy. And I personally think it's an essential playset for children, because it's required to create the weapons of the massive armies that would soon storm the gates of Helm's Deep. But overall, the set came in at only $40. It included the exclusive leader of the Urukai Scouts, two Mordor Orcs, and plenty of weapons and armor for a full day's play. At number 8, I have set 9472, Attack on Weathertop. This is of course the scene where Frodo was stabbed by a Morgul blade from one of the Nazgul Ringwraiths. So Frodo was an obvious inclusion in the set, and he's technically exclusive because of his blue cape. But so was Merry and the two Ring Wraiths, which are must-haves for any LEGO Lord of the Rings fan. Overall, the set is accurate to the movie. It includes the stairs leading up to the top and the overhanging rock formations, but for me, Weathertop just doesn't have enough distinguishing features to warrant a higher spot on this list. At number 7, I have set 9471, the Yurikai Army. I played with this set's positioning quite a bit, but it found a spot here for several reasons. While I love the addition of the wheeled ballista, which is a great little design, and the inclusion of Aomir and the Rohan soldier, both of which are exclusive, however this set just lacks a bit of substance with the main build. However, it moved up on the list because not only is it a perfect little minifigure battle pack, it can also be an expansion for Helm's Deep. You could definitely buy multiples of this set and really create a massive Helm's Deep and definitely have enough figures to attack it. At number 6, I have set 9473, The Mines of Moria. This set beats out the previous sets because I quite enjoyed this scene and the figure selection is also great. You get two exclusive Moria orcs, which look great and their olive green color variation. You also got the only versions of Boromir and Pippin, at least until a 2023 set. And of course, what Lord of the Rings army would be complete without an excellent troll big fig, the only of its kind to date. The blue color choice here does stretch the creative license from the movie though, but away from the figs, overall this was a great set with a fair amount of displayability. But ultimately, it's an excellent playset which includes enough scenery and things to smash to recreate this high intensity close quarters battle. At number 5 I have set 79009 Battle at the Black Gate. I will be honest with you all, this is my least favorite battle from the movie. Ultimately, it's just a last chance standoff and or distraction to allow Frodo and Sam to destroy the ring. Maybe I'll get some hate for that, but that's just how I feel. But in terms of the set, I think it's an accurate enough recreation of the scene, which packs in a lot of detail across the front of the gate and other good details around the back with extra things like weapon racks and such. But in person, the set is just rather small and it doesn't have a menacing enough footprint to honor the gates of Mordor. But to give credit when it's due, it appears LEGO did design it in a way to allow for expansion. Otherwise, the figure selection, while limited, does hit hard with three excellent exclusive minifigures with a well done reprint for Aragorn, and to date these are the only two examples of Gandalf the White and the Mouth of Sauron. Who should win the award for being the shortest lived character ever produced in minifigure form? At number 4 I have set 79008, The Pirate Ship Ambush. Over the years, I've determined that some of my favorite builds are pirate ship type builds. And while I really do like these Corsairs of Umbar and their interesting sail design, this set just can't be any higher on the list because of screen time. Maybe I'm off base here, but I feel like these ships were only shown in the Return of the King for maybe a minute or so in a three or three and a half hour movie. And that's just really unfortunate. However, the good things about this ship is that it's an overall cool and interesting build it's quite sizable, and while it has the same versions of mainline characters we get in other sets, it does have some exclusives like the King and the Soldiers of the Dead and the Pirate of Umbar, of which also had minimal screen time in the movies. Overall, it's a good set that had more page time in the books, but failed to make much of an appearance in the theatrical version of the movies. 
Now that we've made our way into the top three, I think the next three sets are all great, and I think each one can be a number one set for a lot of fans. But in my ranking list, at number three, I have set 9474, The Battle of Helm's Deep. This is my second favorite battle in the movies, of course coming in behind Minas Tirith. And on that note, can we discuss in the comments what a travesty it is that LEGO has never made a Minas Tirith set? Anyhow, the set was excellently crafted to resemble the massive fortress for the people of Rohan. It also included exclusive figures like King Theoden, Haldir, and the Urukai Berserker. And as I mentioned earlier, Helm's Deep can be expanded with the Urukai Army set, which I believe you can buy multiple expansions. Overall, I definitely think this is the best LEGO Lord of the Rings Fortress and probably the best playset as well. My only criticism is that I wish the center tower was just a bit taller to better resemble the movies. At number 2 I have set 10237, The Tower of Orthanc. Now if you're a fan of the original Lord of the Ring ways, then this set is most likely number 1 in your eyes, and I can totally agree with you. But I unfortunately was not into Lord of the Rings when these sets originally came out, so I'm a bit less nostalgic towards them. But overall, I will agree with the fans that this set is truly awesome. It towers over Middle Earth with a massive presence. Now I will say that after seeing it a few times at LEGO conventions, it is awesome but at the same time the black color scheme can be a bit monotonous. And in most cases very dusty. That's not a knock on the set at all, but it's just a fact of life for primarily black LEGO sets. That aside, this truly is an awesome set. It has a lot of outer detail and multiple well detailed interior scenes, like the recreation of the wizard battle between Gandalf the Grey and Saruman, which is an exclusive figure and I have to say that LEGO did a great job on this figure. Another exclusive figure is Grimma Wormtongue, King Theoden's right hand man that was actually working for Saruman. Gwaihir was also included to recreate the scene where he comes in and rescues Gandalf from the tower. And lastly, it includes a pretty good build of Treebeard, who attacks Isengard and the Tower of Orthanc in the two towers. Overall, this is an excellent playset that is also a must-have display for any LEGO Lord of the Rings fan. And coming in at number 1, I have set 10316 Rivendell. I placed this set over the Tower of Orthanc for a couple of reasons. One, I think it's one of the most beautiful LEGO sets ever created. Just everything about it is visually appealing to me. And I also think it's a great set for LEGO fans that aren't necessarily Lord of the Rings fans. Secondly, I think it's an awesome playset because the build includes a lot of the scenes from the movie which can be easily recreated with the 21 included minifigures, of which are all exclusive and the only way to get certain characters in LEGO like Gloin and Old Bilbo. Previously, you would have to have purchased 5 different sets to get at least the top 10 characters of the Fellowship, which were the only versions of those characters before Rivendell. Overall, I think this set is just a complete package and while the price tag is definitely a hard one for many to swallow, I truly believe it is the one Lord of the Rings set to rule them all. However, I do think there's a set that can dethrone Rivendell and that is maybe an 18 plus 500-ish dollar Minas Tirith. Then we would finally be able to get Faramir and Denethor, the Suicide King. Ooh, and maybe even a molded or brick built elephant. That would just be spectacular. Man, we gotta make this happen, guys. Call your local LEGO representatives, stat. Okay, everyone, what did you all think about my rankings in today's list? Did I play something wrong? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And what do you think about LEGO releasing a large 18 plus Menace Tirith? Is that something you all want? Please let me know. Lastly, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing. It really helps out the channel and enables me to make more and higher quality videos in the future. Anyway, if you stuck around this far, I appreciate you and until next time, keep building and thanks for watching.